Father, we do thank you this morning. And we honor you this day, God. We give you praise and glory. And Father, this morning as we come to worship you, Lord, everything that has happened in our lives this week, Father, help us to just focus on you and give you the worship, God, that you deserve. Lord, I pray that we would enter into a place, God, that we would just uh, focus totally on you and everything that is that you're about today, Lord. And everything that we desire to give you is the highest praise of worship this morning. And Father, we'll be sure to thank you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.
worship you this morning. Lord, we honor you. You are glorious. You are marvelous. You are wonderful. Father, we thank you, God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit. And Father, as we continue to worship you, Lord, let the presence of your Holy Spirit, God, be in this place as you minister all around this altar today, God hearts and lives of people today. God, that you would continue to pour out your spirit in hearts and lives today. Lord, as we continue to worship you, Lord, and everything that we do, Father, everything, God, that we say, Lord, let it be about you this morning. We honor you, Lord. Hallelujah.
God will take your sins and you'll see, Lord. Lord, we know that you're working right now, God. And let me see here. 
complained to her pastor about her husband, saying that he never tells her that he loves her. And in a counseling session together, he quickly replied, she never stops talking long enough for me to say anything. <laughs> Husbands, look at your wives and say, you don't talk enough. <laughs> and then there was a hush in the church. Story about a young woman talking about the young man she was dating remarked he was always doing and saying the nicest things for her and seemed never to run out of new things to say and do for her. You see, God has many different ways of telling and showing his love to his children, but as the children of God, we have to allow him to do that. You see, God has a message of love each and every day for us. There's nothing that will separate you and I from the love of Christ Jesus, but what we allow into our life ultimately determines what we put out. What we put in, we put in. Garbage in, garbage goes out. Right? If I don't feed myself daily with God's word, then the tendencies and the things of this world will creep in. And ultimately, I become captive by the things of this world. And I don't allow the word to change my heart and life. Because if I don't take the L out of the world, the word, the, if I don't take the L out of the world, the, let me say this again. All you by listening by audio or watching, I, 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 yeah, anyhow. If we don't take the L out of the world and get into the word, the world will suck our brains out. That's what will happen. I hope you're applauding because I got it right, or you're just applauding because I raised the great state. Anyhow, <laughs> the first thing this morning to share with you is this, is God's love is a gift. God's love is a gift. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2 and look at verse number 4 with me. God's love is a gift. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 4. Hallelujah. I love this verse. This, the book of Ephesians and Philippians are my two favorite books in, in the Bible, but this verse here, Ephesians 2, verse 4, but God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. And thank God it's by grace that we are saved. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's by grace that you're saved. It's by grace. You see, God's love for you and I, we can't earn that. Huh? We receive it. We receive the love that he has. 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Beloved, let us what? Love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth God is born of God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. Because why? God is love. Amen? Amen. Be love and let us love one another. We can thank God for the love that he has for you and I. Amen? Amen. Praise God. It's the love of God which is shed abroad in our hearts. We can always trust and count on the love of God never to fail us. It's like a floating ocean. Any of you ever been on the ocean? I remember swimming in the ocean when we were in Florida. I, and, and you know, sometimes you get so absent-minded. <laughs> and, and I was in the ocean, and, and it was, I was with Jeremy. Mary and I were on vacation with Jeremy and Holly. And Jeremy and I were in the ocean, and I said, oh, just keep going out deeper and deeper. And I kept going out, and all of a sudden you see the lifeguard standing up doing these with the flags. And that means one of two things. That means that the, the waves are too big and they'll suck you under, or it means we've spotted a shark. <laughs> Both I did not like. <laughs> so I kept running feverishly, swimming as best as I could, grabbing all the salt water I could, 
And all of a sudden, I got hit by a wave, and just me with my great mind and my great wisdom, I had my glasses on in the ocean. Oh, no. Got sucked under a tidal wave there, and boom. Lost my glasses. I came up, and Jeremy says, hey, Pastor, your glasses are gone. I said, yeah, they are. Aren't they? <laughs> so I was driving without my glasses home. Sort of. Looking at one eye, looking out the other. No, I didn't drive without a track. I didn't drive without a white track. But the, the point is that, you know, when you're on the ocean and you're in the ocean, you're just caught up by the beauty of what life is like out there on the, in the ocean. And it's just a, it's a beautiful scene. And that's the way the love of God is. It, you know, think about the canvas that he's painting right now in your life, personally. God's love is a gift. We, we, we don't deserve it. We can't earn it. His love, the gift that he wants to give, is freely given. Amen? Amen. Now, second thing. God's love is everlasting. Romans chapter 8, 38, 39. That was our text today. You see, once moods and emotions change, and often quickly, from one extreme to another. You ever been around a real moody person? Been around somebody that just, you know, oh man, really? It, they just, you know, just like want to enlighten your day and they encourage you and all that great thing. And, and they're just like, they're, oh me, oh my, oh my. You ever been on a one sided conversation where it's about everybody else? <laughs> yep. You never had that? Yeah, Nancy said, yep. <laughs> yeah. And you never get into that fact of knowing that. You know, the emotions and everything of what people go through. And knowing that God's love is everlasting. You know, he, he cares about every one of us. It has no variation. It's always the same. The Bible says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? He never changes. His love for you and I, no matter how bad we blow it, his love never changes. Amen? And when we're going through it, don't we know that God will bring us through it when we're going through it? He'll bring us through it. Because why? His love that he has for you and I. One cannot get God to start loving him or her. It's already there. It can't be deterred, interrupted, changed, or stopped. You can't pray and say, God, stop loving that person because I don't like them anymore. Really? You can't do that. Here's the detriment that happens today in, in the kingdom. This is what happens. We pick and choose who we're going to love. And why? If they fit into our association, we're good to go. Well, guess what? As long as you'll know me, I'm probably, not intentionally, but probably am going to offend you or hurt your feelings. I don't mean to do it. It's, it's just a, a part of life, right? I'm going to intentionally come up to you and I'm going to say something bad about you. No, I'm not talking about that. What I am talking about is that we cannot pick and choose who we are going to love. Because the Bible says Jesus died for all. Amen. Amen, Rouch. Jesus died for all. He didn't die for the ones that he was going to pick and choose. Who was Jesus came into the world to save that which was lost. All of us are in need of the Savior. Amen? Amen? All of us are in need of the love of God. You can't love me without the love of God. It's going to be impossible, trust me. Because I'm not perfect. I'm close, but I'm not there. Amen. <laughs> Don't argue with Jack. He's like E.F. Hutton. When he speaks, everyone listens. Amen? But you know, that's the thing. Will you love me despite my imperfections? Yes. yes. Will you? 
Some of you have to think about that. That's not a, that's not where I'm looking for right now, okay? I'm looking for you to kind of just go with me here, all right? But you know what? Each of us have imperfections. Each of us have flaws. But you know, the love of God never changes. Thank God for that, amen? Aren't you thankful for that this morning? That God loves us despite our own selves? And we're the ones that got to get out of the way. Now, you may, I've said it before, you may not like me, but you got to love me. But I know everybody in this church likes me. <laughs> Somebody, uh, anyhow, let's, let's keep moving on here, amen? <laughs> we can't do anything to undeserve the love of God. Can't do it. You can't undeserve the love of God. No matter how bad we might blow it, God's love doesn't just, okay, well, they completely blew it. He, they did this or they did that. God's love, is that he loves us despite our flaws. Hallelujah. That's why when we're going through it, he'll bring us to it. He'll bring us through it. Why? Because his love is perfect. And the Bible says perfect love casts out all fear. That's what the Bible says. God's love has nothing to do with man's nature. But it has everything to do with his purpose. His call. He came, he sent his son, Jesus, into the world to die once and for all. Amen. He came into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world, what? Through him, might be saved. Amen? Amen? You will never know. I was sharing in Sunday school this morning with, with the kids. I was sharing this lesson this morning. I was talking about with God as our enabler and the role of the Holy Spirit. I was talking about the fruits of the Spirit. You know, in Galatians chapter 5, mm -hmm. there it lists the 10 things that are like uncharacteristic of, of, you know, all those things that the flesh gratifies. And then all of a sudden it goes into those last two verses in Galatians 5 there about the fruit of the Spirit, those nine fruits there. And I was asking the kids for examples of friends of theirs that don't know the Lord that have reached out to them. And the question of, why did they reach out to you? What was the thing? And what can you do to encourage them and share with them about the love of Christ? Oh, it was a great lesson. If I say so myself, it wasn't important. She's taking the fifth. Amen. Praise the Lord. I was looking for you to kind of help me here, brother. Amen. The third thing this morning is God's love is available to all. It's available to all. Why? John 3.16. If God was asked by one of his children to bring judgment on a person who had caused hurt, God would say, I'm not going to do that. I can't do that. I love that person too. No matter how much they may have hurt you, you have to be willing to what? Forgive them. You cannot put conditions on forgiveness. I'm going to say that again because that was really good. You missed it. So get ready for it. You can't put conditions on forgiveness. Amen. Amen. When, we, when we get hurt or we hurt somebody, you can't put conditions on it. You can't pick and choose who you want to forgive. I forgive you, but no, 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 no. Can't do that. You can't do that. Uh -uh. That's not biblical. There's no buts after God. <coughs> I'll forgive you, but I'll... Oh, no, 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 can't do that. If I offend you 70 times, you have to forgive me 70 times 7. So 490, and if you use that quote, you're done, right? No. no. Number is insignificant. No matter what happens, we must be willing. We can't put conditions on forgiveness. We can't do it. Every believer, child of God, has fault, flaws, and failures. Every single one of us. Yet Christ died for those outside of God's family as well. The whosoever. Those that have not believed on him. 
But those that call on the name of the Lord, the Bible says, shall be saved. Amen? Amen. What Jesus did for us as the children of God, he did for everybody else in this world as well. Remember where God brought you from. Remember how God brought you through it and is going to get you through it. Remember, no matter how bad we may have gotten hurt, no matter how bad it may really be, never forget that we were once like those who slumbered. Remember that. Because it's the whosoevers that need to experience the love of Christ Jesus. And who better, with us having skin on like Christ, can be those people that can lead those whosoevers to the Lord. You see, as Jesus forgave and continues to forgive, we also must continue to forgive. That's Mark chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. You can't put conditions on forgiveness. And finally this morning, the fourth thing is God's love is immeasurable. Praise God. His love is inexhaustible beyond any form of measurement. His love, man, his love can't be added or divided or subtracted. It's not a math problem because God is love. Amen? Amen. God is love. <laughs> As one walks with God, grows longer, our relationship becomes deeper and enables that person to be able to know that they can express the love of God in somebody else's life. Why? Because it was expressed in theirs when they came to faith in Jesus Christ. Think about where God pulled you from. Think about the moment, if you haven't known the Lord all of your life, and you were in a place that maybe recently, or maybe you've been serving the Lord for a number of years, but think about that place that God brought you out of. Think about where it was when you first gave your life to Jesus Christ. If you did it a few weeks ago, a few months ago, a few years ago, or a long time ago, our excitement for Christ should be the same then as it, or the same now as it was back then. Amen? That flame should never go out. That flame should be based upon how I feel. Even though we all have feelings, amen? But here's the good news. This world is not my home. Hallelujah, I'm just passing through. Amen? We sang about it this morning. You got that mansion? You have a mansion? Yes. Do you? There's only four of you who have a mansion. Do you have a mansion? Yes. Amen. God has a mansion for you. Prepare over the hilltop if you know Jesus. Christ. Praise God. Heaven is my home. Amen? That's my reward. Praise God. I can't wait until that day when he calls us home. And get that new glorified body. That's all I'm waiting for. See Jesus and have a new glorified body. Amen. Hallelujah. Won't have to worry about furniture disease anymore. My chest ain't gonna fall on my floors anymore. Hallelujah. But it's good. I forgive you, man. But anyhow, God gives enough love to heal and it hurts the wounds that have been caused. I, I've seen some of the deepest, darkest hurts that a, a person can go through physically and spiritually. 
and have watched them come out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. You know, if there's one thing that I ever want to be uh, known for in ministry as a pastor, it's, it's, it's not about the number of people that I, that I pastor in the church, but it's about knowing how contagious I was with the love of Christ to a person in their life. You know? I had somebody ask me a couple of weeks ago, they said, why are you always so happy? You don't understand the receiving end sometimes of, you know, what I might go through. But they said, why are you so happy? I said, because I want to be contagious. I want to rub off on you. And you know, that's the way we should be. We want to rub off on people in a good way. Amen? You've, you've heard it said, it's not so much the year I was born or the year I, was, I left this world, but it's what I did in between the dash that counts. And that's what I want to be known for. What I did inside the dash. Amen? And I've got news for you this morning and before we close. I am not perfect. Amen. I have flaws and I have faults. And again, the love of God doesn't put conditions on how or when we should be able to forgive. God's love completely compensates the pain. His love completely compensates that pain. Why? Because what's happening here is temporal. But what we do for eternity <laughs> Jesus Christ wants you to know every day the love that he has for you. And this morning, not knowing where each one of us is at. If we'll simply open our eyes and our ears and clearly hear from heaven, God can do immeasurably more than what we could imagine. But the question goes back to the refreshing glass that Matthew drank or the garbage can Ryan refused to drink of. What are you allowing in your life this morning? What pain has garbaged you or hurt you to a place where it's with you're withholding maybe forgiveness? Maybe reaching out to somebody? Going to that person? You know where the enemy is going to get really angry? When we have aught with our brother or our sister, we have unforgiveness maybe with somebody, we haven't reconciled with somebody, you know where the enemy is going to get really upset? Not when you continue to pour garbage out about that person, but when you come to the cool, refreshing glass and drink from the master's hand. And you know what will get the enemy in a, in a whirlwind this morning? Maybe there is somebody here today. Or maybe that person's not here today. But you have to forgive somebody because they've hurt you and you're withholding that. If God will bring you to it, I will guarantee you through his word and the love that he has for you, he will bring you through it. You cannot move forward in your life unless you forgive. You can. You will be a stale, stagnant believer in Jesus Christ. You'll have a form of godliness, but you'll be denying the power because you didn't believe in forgiveness. And so this morning... 
we're going to do something that's a little bit uncomfortable in the house of God. We are. You know why? Because it's what the Bible says to do. And sometimes we don't like to have to be scratched and confronted with some things. But this morning, I'm going to ask you to probably take maybe the biggest risk that you've been here at Victory Lane Assembly of God or, or a message you may have not heard in a long time. But there might be somebody here today that has hurt you. Somebody that maybe they're not here, but they've hurt you. I'm going to ask you to do something real simple. Here's what the Word of God also tells us. That when that person comes to us, the love of God, see, we don't want anything to separate us. We don't want any garbage in our life to separate us from God's love. But this morning, you might be here today, and you need to forgive somebody, whether they're here in this church or whether they're not here. But I'm going to ask you to simply do something. And I'm going to ask this church, by no way, shape, or form, I trust that you're spiritually mature enough, hopefully, that if you see somebody get up to come to this altar or go to another person in this church, you're not going to be appalled or say, I can't believe that person. But you're going to rejoice. You know, that's part of it the healing and the grieving process of being a believer. Because I don't want this church to be crippled. I don't want that to happen. I don't want us to have ought against one another. I want us to see and have victory. Why? Because when we're going to do something for the kingdom and we're going to make the enemy bad, we're going to have to go to two services eventually. Why? Because we're allowing the Spirit of God to move. And you know what? When it's done, it's under the blood. It's under the blood. I don't have, or you don't have, the authority to go back and remind that person of their past when it's under the blood. Because that's not biblical. The Bible says as far as the east is from the west, he is forgiven. Amen? Amen? So this morning, every head bowed, every eye closed. I want this to be a personal moment for the next couple of minutes before we close together corporately in prayer. I trust today, as over this last two weeks, as you as you've heard this message today and last week. Your heart has been challenged and your heart has been full. But maybe you're here today and there's somebody right now that you might need to get up and go to that person. Or maybe they're not here and you just maybe either would like to take that act and step up and come to this altar today, whatever it may be. But if somebody has hurt you or offended you and it's been difficult for you to let go of, I want you to go to that person right now. Just get up from where you're at, go to that person and say, please forgive me. You don't have to give them detail. Just say, please forgive me. I've, had, I've held this against you. And then pray with that person. Real simple. Or maybe in your own heart that person's not here. But you just, would, in your own way, say, Lord, please forgive me. I've been withholding forgiveness. I've been angry. I've had resentment. And I want to move forward. So just for the next couple of moments, before I close corporately together, would you take that time right now 
And if that's you today, would you simply get up and move to that person that may be here today? Or just in your own seat if that person's not here. And then we'll close together at the end. So go ahead. Take that moment right now. today this message over these last couple of weeks we've, as we've heard from you Lord I pray today that whatever it is that we may be going through we know that nothing is too difficult for you because you will bring us through so Father this those that by demonstration at this altar or even by way of in their seat today, they've been hurt, offended. Lord, they are expressing that they desire not to have anything separate them from the love of Christ. So today I pray that the presence of your Holy Spirit is moving right now in that heart of that person, whether at this altar or whether in their seat. And Father, we thank you this morning because we know that the love of God that is shed abroad in our hearts and our life that you came and you died once and for all that we may live. So Father, I pray this morning that as we leave this place today, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just continue to move in our heart and that we would be free from whatever it is that may be holding us or setting us back. Father, we love you today and we honor you and we give you thanks for this day. And we ask it in Jesus' name, God, as we move forward, let it be under the blood, the blood of Jesus. And we give you thanks and praise in your name. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise this morning.